and welcome back. Now today we're going to have a very very brief revisit of this but more than that um, we're going to look at uh, a library and what on earth is this you ask? Good questions and we'll come on to them all. Now if you remember last video I said I was disappointed with the volume of the tone coming out of this beeper uh, and as you can see the beepers moved position somewhat on here well I'm not disappointed with the volume anymore and in fact I'd consider this to be a working model now unfortunately I had to make a few changes on this board to accommodate that but we'll come on to that in a minute and this little device I thought well if the power on this board here is sucking the current in too much remember I said it's had something like a six milliamp power current consumption initially um, by doing a few things it went down to something like four when I took out the resistor for the power on LED on here and I thought well the rest of it's probably been taken up by all the other gubbins underneath this nano great what I'll do is create a nano sized board with just a bare chip on it now you've seen my other PCBs where I do bare boards like this and put on a surface mount um, 328p or pb chip on there but this time I thought I've got so many of these dill sockets also known as dip dual in line or dual in line parallel I don't know what the P is um, I thought I'm going to use these up because I've got too many of them basically I bought a whole bunch you know a few years back and they've been hanging around ever since so what this is is a is a bare naked 328p on a board with minimal components on the back let's turn it around the right way uh, as you can see PCB way have assembled this for me as part of their SMT assembly service I want to shout out to PCB way sponsors of this video and today I want to concentrate on their PCB assembly service for thirty dollars you can have twenty pieces assembled and that's both sides of the board and free shipping there are various options to be had PCB way can supply all the components or you can supply some and they'll supply the others or finally you supply them all if you want them to supply any of the components make sure you issue them a BOM bill of materials list and they'll contact you to let you know if there's any issues and as I said before with PCB assembly you get free shipping just fill out this simple form indicating how many pieces you need assembled how many components of each type and they'll assemble both SMT and through hole components as I say on both sides of the board this is a board that I ordered recently just five pieces and the assembly process they normally allow up to 15 days of the assembly but it depends very much on how complex the board is it could be done in just a few days and don't forget the PCB way will be in the Mesa in München between 12th and the 15th of November 2019 PCB way assembly process try them now so what it's got on the back here is a few capacitors uh, a resistor it's got a little ceramic resonator in there rather than the crystal uh, for reasons that will become apparent in a minute not just for reasons of size although that does come into it as well uh, and on the top it's simply got a reset button at the top it's got the D13 diode down here the LED so we can always see that and over here I've brought out three extra pins so I can do debugging so it's got the TX coming from here that's where all your serial.print stuff comes out of um, the plus 5 volts and ground the reason I'm struggling reading this because frankly I shouldn't even be looking at a camera like this this is what you should be seeing yay it's a good look isn't it and it's not even speak like a pirate day ah shiver me timbers Johnny boy where's the treasure it scares the kids though when I wear this so yeah my eyes shot on the right hand side so I can't really see much out of that so my binocular vision is a bit dodgy and uh, the vision out of my left eye which is what I'm looking at with at the moment is all a bit misty that's also been sorted out that's from a year ago just so you know if I'm sort of fumbling even more than I normally do on this on this video right so this is all very straightforward really it's just a bare minimalist well I can't call it a nano because it's not a nano but it is a an Arduino something isn't it because it's got all the components on there apart from the USB interface oh and the um, the voltage in the V in barrel jack with the voltage regulator I haven't put that on either because this is being powered from that and that in turn is being powered with that battery 
So I thought, well, I don't need all that stuff and it just sucks the power. Otherwise, I'll end up building a Nano by myself. And that's not what I want. So I program it using the ICSP header here. And that is an advantage to me, programming it that way, rather than via the USB socket. Because as you all know, the bootloader, which is what is often put on these chips for you, but even if it isn't, if you put a bootloader on there, which you have to use ICSP for anyway, and we've been through that with the um, the smart red shield um, to program things. If you put a bootloader on so you can use a USB socket like the Nano would have over here, when you plug in your USB and this starts up, the very first thing that jumps into life is the bootloader. And the bootloader says, oh, I'm awake. Are you trying to upload a bit of code to me or download a new sketch, basically? And it hangs about for a bit trying to work out if you're doing that or not. And then after about a second or two, it goes, you're not. I'm just going to now jump into your sketch. Now on here, I found that a little bit annoying because what would happen is I'd switch it on. And now, did you hear that delay from the time of switching it on till that first beep happened? And that delay is the bootloader as it tries to work out, is there anything coming down the USB line or not? And uh, of course, when I first switched this on, having done all this, I go, oh, what's happened? And then the beep came. I thought, hmm, there are obviously instances when the bootloader is simply not required. Yes, it's very easy to upload sketches via the USB, but then, to be quite honest, I've used the ICSP socket system now for so long, and the absence of a bootloader makes it A, leap into the code immediately, so your sketch starts running the instant it's turned on, and you get back about 500 bytes if you're using the new OptiBoot bootloader. If you are using one of the really old ones, then you've probably lost about 2K, but they, they were pretty old, I've got to admit. So you might not have those anymore. So putting this in place of this is going to drop the power on here like a stone, isn't it? So there's no LEDs. Uh, yes, I know there's an LED on there, but that's under my control, D13. I'm not switching that on. So. Um, I've switched off that LED down there. If you remember, there was an LED that just flashed here. I've turned that off as well. So the power is going to drop like a stone, isn't it? In a word, no, it didn't. It stayed at around about 4 milliamps, just a little bit under 3.65 or something of that ilk. And I thought, oh, how disappointing. I haven't saved any power. And I thought, Maybe I should look at the data sheet to see how much power this chip should be taking when it's running normally. Let's have a look at that. So this is an extract from the data sheet. Well, more than the data sheet. It's a whole 300 odd pages or something on the AT Mega 328. Well, the whole family. And uh, I've highlighted the bits when the processor is active. Now, it doesn't quite match what I've got because this says active at eight megahertz, VCC five volts. Well, I'm not running on five, I'm running on three, as it shows on the line above, but then I'm not running at four megahertz either. So it's gonna fall between these two values. But if we go to the five volt one, it says, the typical consumption is 5.2 milliamps. If we go down to three volts, it's 1.7 milliamps. Well, I'm getting about 3.6, I think it is. And so you can say, well, that's normal then, isn't it? In a non-idle mode, i.e. we are running the sketch 100%, nothing stopped. Four milliamps or thereabouts is what you'd expect, frankly. So, hmm, makes me wonder what I think I was hoping to get. I thought it would drop down to something like one, maybe two at the outside. Well, only if I really reduce the voltage and the frequency, look down one megahertz at two volts, it goes down to 0 0.3. Now I can reduce the speed on here even further down to one megahertz, especially using that mini core that uh, we looked at a video or two ago. That's really useful in doing this rather than just changing all the fuses every time. But I thought, well, okay, in instead of just running active, if you look at the next few lines down here, it says, well, these are the values when you're in idle mode. I'm going, idle. Do I really want to be in idle mode? That basically means you've stopped the controller clock. Everything else runs, but the actual clock has stopped. Well, let's see what sort of power savings we can expect. At 8 megahertz, 5 volts, 1.2 milliamps. Well, I'm running at 3 volts, which is the line above it, but at 8 megahertz. So I would expect 
to be, well, probably below 1 milliamp at that point if it were idle. And I think that was the value I was hoping to get when it was active. Now, idle is easy to set up, but because I'm using the timer library from Bruno from last time, I just wondered if timer 2 would be upset. But actually, as it happens in the idle mode, timer 2 is untouched. However, timer 0, which is our standard millis and delay and all that, the interrupt on there probably runs about a thousand times a second, every millisecond. So I was wondering whether or not I'd actually get any real power savings by doing that. So I need to experiment a bit more, but I've had some comments back from you guys already. And um, one of you said, look, rather than worrying about how much power you're using, think how much time you're going to be in this idle mode, or perhaps even below that, some sort of semi-sleep, but not full sleep, obviously. And you're going to be there most of the time and that only occasionally wake up. So I thought, hmm, that look, needs looking into, and I'm going to look into it quite a bit, I think, and then come back to you guys in some future video, because we've done the deep sleep. And as I say, for deep sleep, when everything is switched off, really, and you're just woken up by an external trigger or the watchdog timer, we get down to 0.2 microamps pretty easily, which is what the spec says. But for just going dozing, if you like, really, dozing rather than sleeping, I'm going to look into that and just see how good I can make this. This will be a good platform to trial this out on. Now, this board was manufactured and put together by PCBWay as part of their SMT service. And I thought, if I wanted to change a few of these components, how easy would it be for me to get those components off? Well, Banggood sent me a hot tweezer soldering iron, which you had a sneak peek of a couple of videos ago. Let's have a more thorough look at it and just see how well that would work. Now Banggood have kindly sent me these UR938D portable hot tweezer soldering irons and I wanted to demonstrate these to you because I think they're really, really good. Um, that's the brand name. Now, the first thing I did was fix this hub of mine. Um, now if you can see when I turn my hub on, the light goes red, blue, blue and then the top one blue as well. Why is this one red you ask? Very good question. That LED was faulty. I had to take this hole apart and take out that little tiny surface mount LED and put a new one. Well because I didn't know if it was going to work I just picked one at random and it happened to be red but it worked and that really made me think wow this tweezer iron really does its stuff. So what is it exactly? Basically you've got two irons in one here so you've got this side this is an iron and so is this and you simply bring these two together just by moving it that little bit and you can adjust how far apart the ends go by unscrewing or screwing in this depending on how big your component is of course okay so that's that's that um, it comes with a nice chunky metal stand and a pretty rubbish bit of sponge that I would never ever use for any soldering iron anyway you're supposed to put water on that and then it expands but frankly I don't like those sort of um, cleaners I prefer this sort of thing which funny enough Banggood also sold uh, me this one and uh, very good it is too. Now the heater control uh, with which has about a meter of cable on it to the mains plug uh, it's got a switch on it here you can switch it on and what this is going to do now it says well you've set it to 387 which is actually a bit high for me normally I set it to about 330 ish when that heater light is on it means it's heating up and eventually it tells you what the temperature is. So this is the real-time heater now. If you don't like centigrade, if that means nothing to you, you can go over to Fahrenheit, Okay, which, funnily enough, means nothing to me. I'm a centigrade person. Right, and, well, that's it. So this goes all the way down to about, I don't know, what is it, 100, 200, and all the way up to 480. Wow, that's hot. I tend to, as I say, keep it down to about 330. Right, so and th now this cable that goes to the iron, it's a silicon cable very flexible and of course if you touch it with the iron it won't burn that's really good and excellent right so here's a little test smd board from banggood as well and uh, i'll show you exactly what i did with this so what we've got here is my test smd board from banggood and we're going to try and desolder and then resolder something now i've got a nice pair of tweezers here look i'll put the um, link in for those as well because they really are useful right let's um, desolder r20 that one there so we we'll just get the um the tweezers on the board i'm a bit cack handed 
but um, there we are look. and it's off you know I don't know where it went but it went off um, it's probably on the end of the soldering wire actually which is not necessarily always a good thing to let it do that if you intend to reuse the component because obviously it's getting hotter and hotter by the second oh look there it is stuck to my tweezers now <laughs> Let's try another one. R19. That one seems to have been resoldered before, but let's um, let's take that one off. So just put the tweezers up against it, grab it both sides, and within an instant, look, it's just gone. I mean, that's it, isn't it? Um, yeah, there it is, stuck to the side of the uh, soldering iron. Hence the tweezers to hold it if you don't want that to happen. What we'll actually do next is actually put one back on, I think. Right, just for demo purposes, I've got some solder paste on that R18, and we're going to put that resistor back on there obviously that solder paste it's just been whacked on there didn't use a stencil or anything not particularly good but it it will prove the point about whether we can resolder it or not now I've just oriented the board a little bit so that I can uh, put it on with the tweezers obviously that way round is difficult I should have held them the other way really so just hold the tweezers on there and it's soldered but it looks messy let me just um, redo that for you so you can see and we'll get rid of all that flux and paste and everything else so let's um let's redo that one so i'm going to hold it down with the tweezers now both sides make sure it's done and off now you must let it see the changing color there with that solder as it's solidified you must wait for that it stays hotter than what you might think now that looks a real mess doesn't it all the flux and the solder still on there not good right i'm going to use um, a horse hair brush quite stiff it is and um, loads of uh, isopropyl alcohol they see look like magic look it really is moving that stuff off isn't it it's pretty good and you can see i've cut the horse hair brush down a bit so it's quite quite stiff now really wipe it off with a little cloth oh look pretty easy isn't it? there's still some it might look as though there's some solder to the side of that component but it's just a demo really what's that black splodge on there i don't know what that is above rp4 oh it is coming off look yeah that's what that was still coming off though okay well that's that's pretty clean isn't it Apart from perhaps the quality of the soldering not being up to my usual standards, but I mean it, it's just so much easier with this thing. Fantastic. Well there we are, a real demo of what you can do, and of course it was all a bit cack handed on the camera, but you got the, the main picture. Right, how much is this wonderful device then? Let's have a quick look. So Banggood are selling this currently for forty seven ninety four, and my Amazon Echo tells me that is thirty seven pounds sixty two in gbp pounds so it's not quite an impulse purchase but believe me it's um, very very useful for certainly for desoldering smd components it's just a, a, a second's job and even for soldering them back up again as long as you hold them with a tweezer then it makes life so much easier anyway i'm going to put links down below okay so at the bottom of this video there'll be a link for this device as I say, it's the Yuhua, I don't know how to say that, Yuhua 938D, portable hot tweezers, mini soldering station, yes. And don't forget to specify and to choose correctly which region you're in. So on here, over here, you must select the correct plug because that will ensure that you get the correct voltage for your um, country. Okay, cool. That's it then. Nice little jobby very nice soldering iron that is too right now i've swapped over these two so my little dip version of a bare naked arduino running here um, is in now look what happens regarding that bootloader delay because there's no bootloader on this chip as soon as i switch on immediately see now it's running and beeping away because I've, I've turned it and the uh, tilt switch is active so that's all working quite well and also it might be difficult for you to notice but the beep on here is many times louder than it was courtesy of the new tone ac library by tim eckel let's have a look at that next so this is the tone ac library from tim eckel it's not actually on github anymore it's now in bitbucket there'll be links down below to all this and uh, it's it's a great little library and the thing of course that took my note straight away was this nearly twice the volume bit here now i have to temper that with a note of caution 
um, if we just go back to the workbench as you can see I've got a passive beeper in there which I had doubts about so I replaced it with one I knew was a passive one um, and I had to wire it up we'll come on to that in just a sec I tried it with those other ones the disc ones and it wasn't very loud at all I have to say louder perhaps than what it would have been with without this library but um, I was rather disappointed with those other ones but this one really works well now this is a passive one so I can only assume that what you're seeing there through the hole is just that disc and this is just a, a resonant chamber and once again the the resonant frequency of this is about the 2k mark and it does work very well but as I say those flat discs ones just didn't seem to cut the mustard but these are great I'll put a link to these little beepers I've got loads of these and active ones in my little store cupboard because I'm using them all over the top all over the place and it's always useful to have that connected up to your program so you know it's working really I'm not saying beep every second but just when you switch on if it gives a little beep and you think oh it's running that's fine just as a sort of confirmatory sort of message really okay back to the library right so this is um, what he's talking about it's it's small and it works um, he says if tone AC isn't for you because of the various technical restrictions you can try tone AC too I tried both on this board and to begin with neither of them worked why well because tone AC the one I'm now currently using has two pins that it must use D9 and D10 those of you with long memories will know that on my board I'm already using D9 to pulse the 74HC165 chip on here to say go and load me the values on these dip switches so I was already using D9 oh dear now what I tried it just in parallel no luck so I've had to make a change to this board to say right pin one on here which was going to D9 is now going to D8 little hack at the top there and this these uh, pins on here now go through the board the extra holes on here for this battery underneath and now they go to D9 and D10 so that's the hack I've had to do obviously being a prototype board you probably expect things like this to happen and uh, as it's my toothbrush timer initially I'm not too worried it's a simple hack now if for some reason tone AC isn't for you though you can use tone AC 2 which means you can use any two pins but it's all bit banged and um, as he says here only if you must because it's a large bit of code it's not as efficient um, it's not as accurate so basically tone AC is superior and um, well I got both of them working eventually on, on the breadboard but in real life tone AC is the one that worked on here tone AC 2 by the way didn't work for me because I'm using the timer library now timer library uses timer 2 and guess what tone AC 2 the 2 refers to the fact it's using timer 2 so it wouldn't compile because there were now two timer interrupts written one in this library and one in the other library and the compiler says whoa what's this you've declared two vector statements here and you've already declared it once well it has been declared once hasn't it you got an interrupt of one and interrupt of the other so I couldn't use tone AC 2 at all except on a bare board on the breadboard right so you can read through this and the um, the syntax is extremely easy there it talks about which pins you have to connect it to so it's pin 9 and 10 for the 3 to 8 and then all these other pins that it shows you here for all the different other chips so make sure you read that first and the syntax is extremely easy as you can see here tone AC the frequency you want the volume which I've always set to 10 that's the whole point isn't it really get it louder the frequency the length of the tone and whether you're not whether or not you want it to run in background as per the original tone library the original tone library says go and set a tone off and then carry on with the remainder of the program which is not always what you might expect so on mine a lot of the time I've said no do not carry on in the background just execute the tone in real time and block the program while it's doing it and then continue but there are a couple of occasions when I say oh, that's fine you can continue now okay code time let's see how I've implemented this okay here's my amended sketch then so basically I've included the tone AC and uh, well that's it that's all we have to do so what I've done is changed my beep routine from a standard tone um, command to the following 
So this is what it now says. It says tone AC, frequency 10, which is the maximum volume, the duration, and no, do not run in the background. There are other occasions when I do run in the background, but I'll let you find that in the code itself. So let's um, let's listen to how it sounds then, although to be quite honest, I'd be surprised if you could tell a difference on the video because the video sort of normalizes the audio anyway. But I can tell you that in real life, that now sounds twice as loud. And of course, I had to do a field test. So I took it into the bathroom, turned my radio on, toothbrush, you know, loud, buzzy noise right next to my ear. Absolutely fine. You could hear, oh, sorry, if I jog this, it will suspend. Um, absolutely fine. In fact, what I'm going to do is set this back down to 30 seconds rather than the two minutes and start it again, just so you can hear the the end tune that I made. If you remember last time, the end tune was stolen from the Arduino playground. Well, on this occasion, um, I've just written a little siren type sound because it just made it so much easier to hear, basically. It does it two or three times. If we wait 30 seconds, which we're not going to, um, it will play. So let's um, fast forward this next bit, shall we? Okay, right, so you heard it. Now that was very easy to understand. You know, if you're in a busy bathroom, light radios, toothbrush, whatever, you can hear that, believe me, I've done the test. Yeah, and that's the little thing to say, switch me off. And we've had a little discussion in the comments from the previous video saying, why didn't I make this automatically switch off? Yes, which I could have done, but um, it was a little bit lazy on my part, wasn't it really? So let's switch that off. Cool, job done. So back to this little tiny board that PCBWay uh, created for me in their SMT assembly process. Um, I have five of these boards, but I'm going to keep at least two. So there's probably a couple to give away. And I'm afraid this time it's going to be UK addresses only. Um, it won't be the first two names and addresses because that's a bit unfair. But the first two I'll pick out of the hat on Monday morning, say, will get uh, one of these. I haven't... Uh, it doesn't come populate with any through hole stuff so there's no chip on it uh, and no pin headers so all these pin headers you see are on there but everything else i think is soldered on there all that underneath so if you want one of these little tiny nano replacements that has to be powered from whatever you plug it into five volts send me your email again and uh, i'll see what i can do but remember uk addresses only and please read the pinned comment if you can ever find it, I know it jumps about all over the place. So much for being pinned. There will be a pinned comment underneath saying whether or not any of these boards are available. But because I've only got two or three to give away this time, it's going to be pretty low, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, that's a great little board. And uh, PCB Way did a, a great job of soldering all that, especially if you look at that tiny little uh, resonator under there. That little thing there. I don't think I could have sold of that. That's probably a step too far. Now, why did I put a 16 megahertz resonator on there? Well, because I knew when I was doing this that it's going to go into this board and therefore was going to be running off a 3 volt battery and therefore would be running off its own internal clock anyway. But I thought I'd try it out with that resonator. And yes, it does work. But of course, it won't work 16 megahertz with a 3 volt battery. It's just, it's not, uh, it's well out of spec. So, 8 megahertz internal, mini core to the rescue. It's a doddle to do now it really is runs like a dream but if you just want this to run at full speed 16 megahertz it will with that resonator not quite as accurately as with a crystal and um, if you try some very high speed serial work you know communicating either to your terminal at 115,200 it might not work you might get garbled characters or to another um, bit of electronic equipment it might not work but apart from that it's good enough i think for hobbyist type use so there we are thanks very much pcb way nice little board that i must say now if you've got any comments i'd love to hear from you down below don't forget to, uh, to give me a thumbs up if you think this is a good video because it tells youtube it was uh, a worthwhile video that's the important thing and uh, don't forget to visit my sponsor pcb way and have a look at their smt assembly process it's all very simple and straightforward i'll put the code in my github and a link to it down below and the library from Tim Eckel as well. Um, yeah, and of course, a link to uh, Banggood for that uh, tweezer soldering iron thing, which is truly excellent. Once you've got one, you think, this is so easy. Why didn't I use this before? Well, frankly, I never knew they existed. So that's probably why in my case. Cool. Okay, thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video.
I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.